beautiful minimal Voyager, one of my favorite instruments ever. So in, in uh, Stephen's project, we uh, I do some sort of Taurus bass pedals simulation kind of vibe. But also there's a fair amount of soloing, which is, which is kind of fun. <laughs> classic mini moog sound this patch is uh, my sort of signature lead sound i use in a couple songs in this project it's a what i like about this patch is it always it, it sounds kind of organic not too bright and brittle it doesn't have a real synthy edge to it very close to a jan hammer kind of thing um, Do you use any external processing on the Voyager, or is yeah, it all just a delay? Okay. Because right now we're hearing it with a delay. Here's without the delay. Whoops. Sorry. 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 A little delay is nice, but you know, it's not. It still sounds good without it. Do you find that the Voyager makes you play differently than a Mini Moog does? Um, yeah, there's, there, there's more variety with the Voyager, mm -hmm. and, and if you if you work at programming, you can make it sound very very close to a classic Model D. I, I I still have a Model D, and I set it side by side with the Voyager, and I got my typical Lee sound on there, and spent a lot of time duplicating that in the Voyager. And one of the tricks I learned. Mini Moogs have a way of cutting through, and I noticed that as you go up the octave, as you go up the keyboard, it gets a little bit louder. So I was actually able to program that function into the um, Voyager using pot mapping, uh, ha having a keyboard control the volume 25%. So as I go up, it gets slightly louder, but it's kind of imperceptible. <laughs> go up it just jumps out and screams a little bit more than if it's perfectly even. There's another patch I, I love, a very uh, very cool um, uh, synthesizer, lead synth uh, program by a guy named Thomas Wolf in Germany. <laughs> Just sync sound. Yeah, it's a great sync, particularly good sync sound. Also, on uh, I, I love using the touchpad, and uh, a lot of times people just uh, sort of use it for filter sweeps or something like that. But you can actually use it for triggering and everything. So there's one section of the show where um, where we have a sort of ambient uh, spacey section in the middle of Raider Two, and I can trigger. Let's see, right now I have I have the touch screen actually functioning as a gate. So the keyboard doesn't even work. The keyboard doesn't work in this patch. Only the, only the touch screen works. And it's uh, X and Y axis. So the one axis is doing oscillator pitch, the other axis is doing fil the filter. I'll take the delay off so you can hear. Some zones that you could never really get into in any other kind of synthesizer. Um, it, it initially was dedicated to the filter, and then it was just one quick revision later. They made it so the X parameter, and the Y parameter, and the area, in other words, how many fingers you have pressing down, can control any function, any function within the, you know, in the system. So it, it, resonance, filter cutoff, obviously, but other subtle things like in, like attack and decay. And sync and then. You can't do that on a normal synth. You can't, you can't, you can't get that kind of a sound. So 
So that's just a one one of the many things you can do with the touchpad. But that's a that's a kind of an extreme example, actually. A lot of times it's, it could be more of a subtle thing. In, in, the, in the context of Stephen Wilson's gig, those, those are pretty much the, um, the the kinds of things I'm doing: ambient, trippy stuff, some soloing, and a sort of tour space pedal kind of thing. <laughs> 